I have things to show you. I have makes that I have made halfway through making and I do have some potential makes to show you. Um, but first off, I will just say that I've nearly run out of fabric. And so I will show you my current fabric stash and show you what I've got left and what I'm maybe gonna make with that. So since I decluttered my unit, I have two drawers dedicated to fabric. So I'll show you that, and I've sort of separated it. So this one is summer weight fabric and this one is winter weight fabric. So I'll show you this one. Um, I have about one metre remnant from a blouse that I made. The other seems just blouse and I may make that into something. If I don't, that will get donated. I have some swimsuit fabric and lining to go with that. But I never made a swimsuit this summer because August was, the weather was rubbish. And it just wasn't hot enough to like go in the sea or go to the beach so, and swimsuit elastic. So that will be for next summer now. Lining, 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 random fabric my husband brought back from Africa. And then I have two lengths of fabrics when these will be for summer dresses because they don't, they're suitable for summer and then they can be a standalone piece. That is it for that one. And then, this one is the winter week fabrics. Now I made a jumper with this, which is, um, it's got like sparkles in it. I don't know if that's coming up on camera. This is an off cut. And I did think maybe I'll make that into a cushion, cushion cover. If I don't, that's going textile recycling bin. Um, I have this length here of wool coating. Now I bought this online in a sale just after Christmas. And I'm not convinced that the color suits I'm not convinced it's my colour. So I don't know if I will m make that or not. So that is just sitting there looking at me. I've got some horsehair canvas. I've got this, which is viscose twill, and it's a raspberry colour, but whenever I try and photograph it, it always comes up red. And I was thinking about making the Archer shirt by Grainline Studio, but because obviously pattern ma matching, so I have been avoiding that, but I think that is what I'll have to make because I don't really have anything else. My other fabric is, this is a viscose linen, it's a navy, and it was to make some ultimate culottes, but then the summer came and went. So really, actually, I'll put that in my summer, my summer drawer. And then, there's an off cut of denim. I have some sweatshirting, which this, again, is not my colour. I got it to colour block a hoodie for my daughter, which she wouldn't wear. So that is there, so I might de-stash that. And that's it. So in terms of usable fabrics, this is obviously gonna to have to be my next project because I didn't really have anything else. It's this or the green coat. And um, I'm not convinced about the green coat at the minute. So it looks like I have to do this and I don't have anything else. That's it, no more fabric. That's why it's shitting fabric, I only have a meter of that. So it's not enough to make a jumper for myself. Um, I don't really know what to do with it. And on camera it looks a bit deeper in colour, but it's actually a bit sort of pale and... When I, I found an app basically, I found an app which was, you take a selfie and it will colour, give you some colour choices of your colour palette. So I'll put the photo on screen now of the colours it came up with, but it's actually, I think it's quite accurate. And it says at the bottom, there's like colours to avoid. And it's those sort of autumnal colours, actually, those full colours of like the sort of mustard and the sage green, which I have made things in, in the past. And I thought, oh, just no, it makes it look a bit ill. So I think it is quite accurate, although it was just literally a free app. So it's nowhere near like a proper colour analysis. Like if you watch Whitney from Tom Cat's Dictionary, she has had her colours done properly. I, ha I have vaguely had them done in the past. I've been to like an event where someone quickly does it in like five minutes. We've got building work going on the back of us, so I apologise if you can hear that. Today I have actually made sure not to put the washing machine on, which was in my last video on the spin cycle, but nobody actually complained about it. Anyway. So yeah, so I think it's gonna have to be the Grey Line Archer shirt or the coat, but talking of coats, I will show you. I have made a coat, but it's kind of half done. Well, the good thing about decluttering is that I found some fabric, which I knew I had. It was in my daughter's bedroom cupboard upstairs. So it, it forced me to organize what fabrics I've got and actually use them up. So I found this fabric, it's like a charcoal-y, 
fabric. I have no idea of fiber content. So I don't know if there's wool in there. I mean, I'm sure there's a burn test, but it's not 100% wool. There's definitely something else in there. So I have made a jacket. But I'll tell you why it's only half done. It's because although I have a clapper, which my dad kindly made for me, I just couldn't get the right press going on. Because when I sort of clamped down, my ironing board was a bit springy and it wasn't, I think perhaps I should have put a cover over the dining room table and then been resting on wood so it's on a hard surface to clamp my seams shut. So I am waiting to take this to the dry cleaners. If you hear me sound a bit nasally today, it's because unfortunately I did get COVID, tried to manage to avoid it for like well over a year, which is very good because I managed to have my vaccinations um, in time. But yes, came down with the, the old COVID. So I have been left a bit nasally and a bit cold. And if I do cough, I will edit that out. I feel like I'm gonna cough now after I said that. So I haven't been to the dry cleaners because I've been in isolation and then my husband got it, my son got it, and then my daughter got it. So I'm sort of waiting till we've got every, I mean, I'm, I can go out. If I didn't want to, you know, spread the love. So this is the jacket, which is the Mallard jacket by the Sewing Revival. And I discovered it, I didn't realise, I was like searching what can I make. I knew that I had a certain length of fabric and I, I knew the kind of style that I wanted as well. And so I saw a video which is a collaboration about a year ago with Alex Judge Sews and the Dahlia Society. And Alex and Kristen made this coat. And so I thought, actually, I quite like it. And it's, there's two length options, which the green fabric, I did think maybe I could make the long one in green, but I'm not entirely sure. But I haven't got a good press on this. But last time, last time I made a coat, I took it to the dry cleaners. It cost me eight pounds and they gave, me a, gave it a proper press and it made the seam so flat. So I haven't put the closures on this. There's not buttonholes with this one. It is just like sew on snaps. And so I thought that I would get it pressed and then it would be nice and flat and ready for me to put the closures on. So there's nothing on it. But all the pockets, oh, I'm sweating on my lip now, sorry. But the pockets, everything's on it. I mean, I don't know how well it shows up, but I really like the length. And I made a size, I think I made the size 16 because I wanted to have a bit of room in there so I could wear a cardigan or a jumper underneath it. I have made coats in the past where I've sort of, I've overfitted, it's a bit of an, a problem that I, a recurring problem that I have sometimes. I overfit things, then obviously you wear a coat, you wanna be able to wear a jumper underneath it. So it's, I haven't altered the length. This is the length and it comes out. I'm five foot three, I am short waisted. So if you are taller than that, just bear in mind that this is the length that it comes out at and you might want to change that. There is the option of a rounded like sit down collar but I quite like the option of this one here. So this will overlap and then be like this and then it has um, like this pocket, pocket flaps but you do sew those down at the corners and then your hand goes in, you know, the pocket is in the top. So they are patch pockets but I quite like the style of this but this is really just to show you how rounded it looks and then I will do an update once I've taken it to the dry cleaners just to show you the difference of a press and how much nicer it will sit. So if it is fully lined, I did find when I lined the sleeves that I had attached the lining to the outside of the fabric and it was hitching up so I had to unpick it so it sits more free but it's not as sharp as what I'd like. But once that's done, that's a perfect coat for wearing. I've tried it over a big bulky cardigan. I made the Marlowe cardigan, which I'll show you in a second, and it fits over that really nicely, so I would definitely recommend it. I forgot to tell you that the top I'm wearing is the new one, which is the ED Top by So Over It, and it's from one of their ebooks, their Work to Weekend one. Um, I do find, though, although it fits me on like the cuff and the top of the arm, it's like baggy around the elbow, so I think next time maybe like we'd slim that down. It's quite a good length. It's just a basic boat neck um, knit top, but I did do a one inch narrow shoulder adjustment on it, but I, and I also widened that shoulder bit, but it's still, I'm getting like, it's not covering my bra, and it is sort of hitching down, and I find when I hitch it up to where it probably should sit, I've got excess here, which is probably, hollow chest is that what they call it so I probably should have gone by the measurement here or made a smaller size here and then done a full bust adjustment so I wouldn't have that gaping and it would sit better on me but I can't be bothered 
can't be bothered to do a full bust adjustment on a knit top that I want to just whiz through really quick. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So yeah, so this is the length that it comes at. Um, I then realised that I had the Lark Tee with a boat neck option, which my printer is broken and I didn't have that, that version printed out. So as we were in, I was in isolation, I messaged my dad and he printed it out and left it on the doorstep for me. So I emailed him over the boat neck option and then that is what I'll show you because I've made two of those because I thought, well, I'll go from this, which does tell you to add um, stay tape, but I didn't really know what it was. So I cut a thin strip of interfacing to put around the neck because it's literally like a fold under and stitch. So I did use that same method for the Lark T on one of them and then with the other one I just folded under and then just stitched it. I wanted to see because sometimes the Lark T the neckline stretches out a bit so I wanted to see if that interfacing so I wanted to see if that interfacing was making a difference. So I'll show you that. I also um forewarn you I made a lot of stripes in the last week or so and this was last weekend I just felt a lot better um, in myself, still couldn't go outside, but I had fabric which was in my stash, which I no longer have because I've made it into things. And so I'll show you what I've done, but it's lots of stripes. Okay, I've just run upstairs, well, walked slowly upstairs, and got the things, and one is on the air. But before I put the top on, I'll just show you that I made a Marlowe cardigan and I bought this cable knit. And this was with the intention of becoming um, a capsule, so I wanted to kind of work with colours and with patterns that would go together. So this is it. Now it's not, it's neither the short or the long version of the Marlowe. So I got the short version and I altered it last year actually by adding two inches to the short one. So it's a midway between the short and long and I just find it's a nicer length. Um, and it's super cozy. So here we go. And I made this and I couldn't work out because I've got my new machine. I'll put the video about that in the cards above. So I have my Juki DX7 and I hadn't made buttonholes on it and I couldn't work out, I couldn't get the fabric in like the buttonhole plate and then I realised there's an attachment to the buttonhole foot that comes off and then it went through absolutely fine. So although the pattern calls for, I think it's a three centimetre button, can't think what that is in inches, that is more than what most sewing machines will go to on the maximum buttonhole length. So I just set my buttonhole foot for the biggest without putting a button in it. Just like stretch it out for the biggest foot and I think I may have just snipped a little bit extra on the buttonhole but that was fine I've used that size button and um, it made the buttonholes fine now this fabric has this kind of like mesh on the inside so unfortunately it doesn't have that cozy grey on the what's on the outside on the inside but it's really snugly and I size down quite a lot because I'm, I've made this a few times now and it just comes up really big and I can't think of, I will put, I will put the size that I made in the description box down below because I can't remember off the top of my head. I do have it in a notebook somewhere from what I made last year. It's just because I just, I had the pieces already cut out and then I just recut it. So I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was like a, it's either a 10 or a 12 going to a 14. I think I'm definitely 14 at the hips, but it was a lot smaller on the top anyway because it didn't, I didn't want it to swamp me. I am regressing not putting any pockets on though, because it's like, but. So yeah, so when I have, well, I tried this on with the jacket, with the Mallard jacket, and this fits underneath the jacket, and I thought, you know, with gray, it goes with black, and it goes with all sorts of stuff. So that is one of the makes. Really looking forward to wearing that. My daughter actually said she liked it, and normally she's like, what are you wearing? What have you made? So that was the compliment. And the other sweater that I made was the Simplicity, I want to say 8529. It's the one that Simplicity did with Sew House 7. So it's like their version of the toaster sweater, which I've made before, um, but it came up really big. So what I did previously is I've done a medium going to a large, and then I found it's really like swinging out at the bottom. So I just slimmed it down and did a medium all over, and it fits quite nice. The only problem with this pattern is that the neck, the, when they tell you the length for the neckband, it's way too short for trying to do it. I, I pulled the, um, the fabric as much as I could and it was still like two inches too short. So I, re so I unpicked it because I always like to base it on my sewing machine first before like putting it through the overlocker just to be on the safe side. So I unpicked that all and then I recut a longer length neckband and that still wasn't like I still wasn't really big enough 
So I really had to stretch it out, unpick, stretch, stretch, and then annoyingly, the seam has not lined up with the center back. So to know the front from the back, I have plonked, plonked, I have sewn a piece of ribbon in the center so it distracts from the off-centered seam. And I don't use sewing labels because I do find in the back of the neck, really it sounds really itchy and i do cut labels out and i know i'm not the only one but a bit of ribbon is fine because it's smooth and soft and i don't really feel it so this is that i will put it on hopefully it'll go over the top of this sorry bra um right i'll come back in a sec probably shouldn't have tied my hair up but it was really just so you can see the necklines on these things so this is me with a sweatshirting fabric um, which is called Cozy Colours. It has like a little fleck to it. And I did think that this was from that colour palette that it would be like my colour and it just feels really snuggly. There is an option, there is an option with this pattern where the pattern's all in one, it goes into a colour, which I've made before, but it doesn't sit right because it's not separate and it just creases down, looks weird and falls over and it's actually a bit annoying. So, I went with the open neck, which I think then is more suited for all year round. Nice, super cosy, and again, part of my sort of capsule collection that I'm working on as well for autumn winter time that can be layered up. So it goes with black and white. I'm not gonna wear it with a cardigan, but it will go with black coat, jeans, all sorts of things. So I'm trying to be more intentional. So I bought a lot of these fabrics with the intention of making a specific pattern. So with the cable knit, I ordered that, I did a little Pinterest board and I ordered that to make a Marlowe cardigan and then made the Marlowe cardigan. Same with this. I bought this to make a sweatshirt that I wanted to do in one, just an ordinary sweatshirt that didn't have a hood so it goes fine if you put a coat over it and would just go with, you know, if I wanted to wear it over the top of a dress or something or just having that with jeans, that would do that job as well and I found um, if you want to go down that route as well, it saves you money because you're not just making something which you then find you've got nothing to, co to coordinate with. And I'm using patterns that I've already got. So I'm not spending money on extra patterns and I'm sewing, the, I'm buying the fabric, you know, sewing it and then I can wear it and it's not sitting there taking up space. I don't have lots of space to store stuff. I actually feel quite good and I'm not wasting money. So that is my little tip for today. Anyway, on to the next makes. I'm sure my hair's gonna get worse and worse. Um, the more things I take on and off. So the, I haven't actually tried this on since I made it. I just made it and just shoved it on the pile. This is the Lark T that I was telling you about. So it's the boat neck version. And um, this is the short sleeve. So I have made another version, which is the cap sleeve because I didn't have enough of that fabric for some reason. But because there was no pattern matching required on this, because it just being a plain color, it meant that I had more options. I could then do the longer sleeve. The pattern does include instructions for I think three quarter and a full length sleeve but I've never I never buy two meters of jersey fabric because um, I don't really like a really long sleeve I quite like a three quarter length so I might do that in the future thought this might do for work I think this was a 12 grading to a 14 and this one comes out okay the other one I felt perhaps because it's striped I'll show you in a sec seems really long but this one is fine I took two inches out at the shortening lines just so you are aware of that one. This one covers a lot better. And this one, I didn't add the interfacing. I literally just flipped under and then just sewed that down. So I think a really good basic tee and there's so many options to that pattern. V-neck, scoop neck, crew neck, well worth buying. It, again, it's a pattern I already owned. Just reprint it, just printed out the boat neck option. And I've got, it's like I've got a whole new pattern. This I've just got off the error, so it's a little bit damp still. But this one again is exactly the same, but it's with the cap sleeve rather than the short sleeve, so it's longer. I just, because of the pattern matching, I think on the sides on the stripe, the way I put it, I didn't have the length left because I only had one meter of fabric, didn't have enough of this one to do the short sleeve, but it's absolutely fine. Good coverage, again, same size as what I made last time. This one has the interfacing on the neckline, which I then um, ironed on and then folded under. I do feel though that big stripes, I don't know whether it sits longer than the black one, which is a bit odd because I cut them exactly the same length or what, but I feel with this one, it just looks a lot better tucked in. And then it is quite a summery look. I'm not convinced I can keep the red because um, whenever I wash ready to wear clothes, my kids have got red t-shirts, 
they seem to fade quite quick. The red doesn't seem to hold its colour, but for the time being I like it and it has little words on it which says seashell all along it. It was from Beyond the Pink Door. The pattern matching isn't perfect. Again, I just, because I squeezed it out of one metre, I just had to go where there was space to cut the, um, the sleeve out rather than being able to line up the pattern, um, the lines. But I have, um, yeah, perfect on that as I, not so great on that, doesn't really matter quite like this, quite like the red, it's quite cheery for this time of year. I have one more stripey top to show you, so stay there a sec. Oh, and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already, while you just wait half a second. Oh, I definitely have to redo my hair after this one. This one, love this stripe. This one is a free pattern, and it's the Felicia sweater by Mood Fabrics. Now I did make this, I have made this once before, but I did size down on this one because um, their measurements according to their site, if you go, it's Mood Fabrics, but it's like Mood Society, or there's a link on their website, and they have loads of free patterns. And after the whole free ball frocks challenge, was that this year? I think it was, it seems ages ago. I, uh, before I made my dress, I wanted to check what their sizing was like, and I found this pattern, which I made in there, it was too hot to wear. So I have like a coral sort of coloured one with a stripe running through it. Um, which is upstairs in my wardrobe and I haven't really worn it but I know I will in the cooler months but my measurements came out at about 16 but they're 14 to 16 but they're sizing when you print the pattern so 16 to 18 or 12 to 14 so I think I last time I did 16 to 18 but this time I just cut a centimeter off and so it's more of a 16 than an 18 just to slim that down I'm not wearing a t-shirt underneath this but I think you know there is room to put like a little vest top on or something I have not had to alter the shoulders on this so I haven't had to do narrow shoulder adjustment I did take off about a centimeter in length can't think what that is in um, three eighths should know yes yeah, three eighths of an inch took that off the length of this because it was too long and now, I mean, it is quite a close fitting, so obviously I'm putting that on with my ponytail. I had to redo my hair because it is quite, you know, fitted around the neck. But I think it's great for this time of year and even better because it's a free pattern. Haven't had to do any adjustments. Quite long on the sleeves, which I don't mind, but loose enough to then put an into a three quarter length sleeve. This is actually in a French terry, so it's really warm. Um, and this is from Beyond the Pink Door. And again, I bought it with the intention of making some kind of like three quarter length top and then remember that I already had this pattern printed out. Again, using patterns that I already own and it was a free pattern to start with. Win-win in my book. So yeah, I can't wait to wear this. And I thought I've seen quite a lot of these like turtlenecks um, in for this sort of season and in for this winter time, autumn winter time, so I think it's quite on trend as well. So I will leave a link to that pattern in the description box below. I don't think I like patterns, but I've realized that the pattern that I do like is a stripe. I love a stripe. So a stripe and a plain, I think, is my way ahead, my way forward of being more intentional about what I buy and what I choose to sew, because they will be things that I do actually wear. So do you have, like, are you a floral person? Or do you like pastels? Is there a particular color palette or um, like theme that you go with and that you sew with. I found that by narrowing my search, it has made me feel less overwhelmed with fabric shopping. So I may do a video um, coming up about that, but let me know in the comments down below, do you stick to a color palette or do you stick to a certain type of pattern? I have sent off two patterns to be all, um, printed out with Fabuloso and some fabrics as well. So when they arrive, I will share with you some upcoming plans, but I will make sure that I do a video showing you the before and after of pressing of the coat because it's really helpful. Hopefully it will turn out really well. So I'll try and get that dropped off at the dry cleaners maybe tomorrow and get that returned so then I can just film it so you can see the benefits and how you too can then um, get a good finish if you're thinking about making a coat or a jacket for this season. So if you haven't checked out any of my coat making videos I will link a, um, a thing I will link the videos down below in the description box if you're interested in making your own coat because there's some tips and tricks in there and I will see you over there in those videos.